We bought the Tappard Philly out of Tis and She Beautiful and will be trained by Todd Fletcher. Extremely athletic, a lot like him. We're excited to see him on the track. Beautiful filly. Um, she's out of a graded stakes mare that ran early as a two-year-old, so I like that quite a bit out of her. This filly looks like she's gonna be super early and precocious. Very good muscled filly, um, just a lot to like about her. Tapret, standing at Gainesway. Hey everybody, it's Jay Privman along with Marty McGee. We're back for another update for our Derby Watch Top 20. Marty, let's review the big race from last week that impacted our current top 20, it was the Rebel at Oaklawn and a couple of newcomers to the list. Why don't you take everybody through who those newcomers are and how it impacted your odds for the Kentucky sure. Derby? Sure, Jay. Uh, we have a couple of newcomers, kind of compulsory, because they, they're going to have the points, it seems like, especially the winner. That would be the one-eyed horse named Unoho. He's now in at 30 to one shades of Racamundo from almost 30 years ago, my first year down at Oakland Park. So he was a very much a surprise winner at 74 to one over a, a another surprise, a milder or so in Ethereal Road. We have them both plugged in at 30 to one. Uh, just a little bit of tweaks up top, Jay, but uh, essentially we're staying the same with Smile Happy up the center. Classic Causeway, Mo Donegal, Zandon down from 10 to 1 to 8 to 1 upon further review. So these are the horse, these are the odds, not what we believe they will be on Kentucky Derby Day, May 7. But if, and it's, it's a big if, they were to run the Derby tomorrow and these would be the 20, those are the theoretical odds. But of course, we know that that will not happen. So uh, I would imagine after the coming week that we would have. Uh, uh, with four derby preps coming up that we would have a more substantive change atop the uh, the derby list. And we'll get to some of those other races in our preview, uh, which you'll find here at drf.com as well. Uh, Marty, let's talk about a little bit more about this Rebel in detail. To me, it was not one of the better preps that we've seen so far. Uh, I thought Unoho had a very fortunate trip getting through every way inside. Uh, I give Vasquez tremendous amount of credit for the clever ride that he gave the horse but he looked to me like he might be beaten at the eighth pole and then he re-rallied and won and i'm not quite sure if that was him re-rallying or ethereal road hitting a wall with 35 yards to go yeah plus the it was a, a clever ride and a punishing ride i think he was hit <laughs> 17 or 18 times by yeah. vasquez's whip some jurisdiction that would be a no-go but uh nonetheless he got an 84 buyer Jay, I think that's perhaps the most revealing uh, factor in, in this race. So, uh, uh, you know, and everybody else got something a little bit less, if, if not worse. And then Ben Diesel and uh, Chasing Time, who I neglected to mention, uh, we had last week in the top 20. They're out because they were even farther back in the pack. Right. And they were the two that were had to be thrown overboard to make way for the two newcomers on our Derby Watch top 20, Unoho and Ethereal Road. And as Marty mentioned, Barbara Road ran on for third and was uh, maybe half a step away from being second in that race, having a little bit of traffic trouble coming through the lane as well. Well, it was the Rebel was the only race last week that we had to review. We'll have more uh, next week, but we also here at DRF.com, as I mentioned uh, a few moments ago, have a preview of the big races this weekend, most notably the Fountain of Youth at Gulfstream, which is where Marty is and the San Felipe at Santa Anita, which is where I will be. So stay tuned here at drf.com for a preview of those races and more. For Marty McGee, I'm Jay Privman. Thanks for watching.